Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's gonna be another one of those videos where I'm just sitting in my apartment, so this is actually a lot easier than going out and you know making videos on the motorcycle. So I can't complain. It's nice to have like woken up this morning and then just like set everything up and then so as you can see on the left side here, we have the Ruach Atlas 2.0. This is the raw carbon edition. This is personally my favorite of the colorways that they have in the Atlas 2.0. And I guess if you haven't been following Ruach, then you're probably wondering what's in the box. What's in the box? Well, let's find out. All right, so now that we have the brown part of the box open, get into this part here. And for this, we are going to switch over to this angle here so that you guys can get a better view of what's going on inside the box. So the box is the exact same as the Atlas 2.0, nothing has changed there. We're going to take this and put this to the side first. We're going to get straight to this helmet here. And I'm going to show you all what this new helmet looks like. So this right here is the Ruroc Berserker helmet. Uh, as you can tell, I've already actually opened the box before. I'm just doing another unboxing just for formality's sake. But yeah, I've used this helmet a couple times now on the road and uh, we're gonna dive into what that was like. So here are the two helmets side by side, the Ruroc Atlas 2.0 and the new Ruroc Berserker. Right off the bat, you can see that there are a few key differences between the two, but you can also see that there are a lot of similarities as well. So first off, the visor mechanism slash goggle mechanisms are completely different and the Berserker has a peak and the Atlas 2.0 does not. So now that you've seen the differences visually, now we can push this over to the side and just focus on this guy right here. First off, if you're wondering what this is right here, this is a GoPro mount for my helmet. This is a helmet specific mount. This is made for the Ruroc Atlas 2.0 and luckily they didn't change too much shell wise when it came to the Berserker. So it's using the exact same mount as it did for the Atlas 2.0. So if you guys are looking for a mount for your Atlas or if you're looking for a mount for the upcoming Berserker lineup, then I'd recommend that you guys go check out chinmounts.com. You can also use my code, it's on the screen for 10% off of your order. And of course, if you're ordering through my referral link, it helps support the channel as well. What comes in the kit is the mount itself, a tether, and a cleaning pad. You wanna make sure you clean the helmet before you put this on. I would also recommend that you use a blow dryer or a heat gun to warm up the adhesive before you apply it, and make sure you let it settle for at least 24 hours, okay? So anyways, if you guys wanna check it out, go to chinmounts.com, use my discount code, and of course, be the action, record the action. Okay, let's put that to the side. All right, so now let's get down to brass tacks. Let's figure out what this helmet looks like inside and out. Let's take off the goggle. Comes off nice and easy, just like that. And uh, of course you can ride like this as well. There was a couple times actually I wanted to see how well the wind noise was. So I, I rode it like this, I wore sunglasses. It was actually pretty nice. Um, it's nice having all that airflow, especially during the hot summer days. This is what the goggle looks like. One thing that I did note is that you have this foam inside here as well, right? And it's the first thing that your nose feels as soon as you put the helmet on. So that being said, this helmet is really good to wear during the colder seasons. And you can also wear it during the summer. But the thing is when you're in stoplights, this part right here gets extremely warm. Like my nose was sweating pretty quickly as soon as I put this on. But the thing is, once you start moving, the airflow that comes in here, it's really, really nice. So as long as like you're moving a lot, then it, it's pretty good. If you're in stop and go traffic, man, this thing is going to heat up on you. So that's just one thing I wanna let you guys know before we move on with this. I don't really know uh, what they can do to improve. Maybe they can make the foam a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. Maybe that would help. So obviously in a traditional helmet, you have those visors you can just, click up and then lift up and then you'll have the airflow. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. Now with this one, it's a little bit harder to use with glove hands, especially if you have the helmet on you. So imagine you have the helmet on you and then you're trying to unclip these two and then now you gotta find a little point here where you lift off the visor. So it's, sometimes it's a little bit hard with one hand, but it's magnetic, so it's pretty cool and it's nice and convenient to take off and on, especially when you have the helmet off. And basically how it works is, clicks right in. And then you wanna secure it by tightening both of those sides here as well. The one thing I wondered when I first got this helmet was, could you use these as regular snowboard goggles? And the simple answer is um, no, I don't think you can because it looks really weird. It's not meant for that kind of thing. If you wanna get a snowboard helmet, then Ruroc does have you know, its own line of snowboard helmets as well. So now we're gonna put that over the side. 
look over here. So don't quote me on what I'm about to say about the peak because Ben told me that this is not the final iteration of how the peak is going to be designed. There are going to be a few changes. Uh, I'm not really sure if they're planning to move forward with this type of mechanism for um, unhinging the peak. I would personally like to see what they have on the Atlas 2.0 where you just twist it and then it comes off as opposed to having a separate tool where you want to take off the peak. Uh, up here as well you have a screw, a fastener that you can tighten to adjust whether you want it over here or over there, whatever is your preference I guess. Like I said a lot of similarities, the venting system, the, the shell itself, I think it's pretty much the exact same as the Atlas 2.0. This helmet is also shockwave compatible. It's got the emergency cheek pads. This right here is a big difference and I think this is amazing. I love having huge chin skirts. I'm a huge fan of it, especially during the winter time where it hugs right underneath your chin. And uh, I think this is a great improvement. I'm actually gonna be passing this around between the Berserker and the Atlas 2.0 because I'm a huge fan of it. Another huge difference to this helmet is that they went back to the traditional double D ring strapping system. So you don't have the fid lock on this. I know there's a reason, I forgot what it was. It probably has to do with like racing and stuff. Um, don't quote me on that either, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's something like that. So looking in the helmet, I don't know if you guys can see it, but pretty much it is the exact same kind of cheek pads as the Atlas 2.0. Nice to see, nice and comfortable. Just a sizing guide for you all. I wear a medium small in AGV, a small in Shoei, and I wear smalls in the Rock Atlas 2.0 and the Berserker. So when you're putting the visor back on, if you have the helmet on, I guess you should try it. You should probably try it. So this is actually one of my favorite things about this helmet is the number of different visor colors that you have. My hair is like a mess probably right now. So Ruroc sent me over all the visor colors that they're gonna be releasing with this helmet. I don't know if all of these visors come with the helmet when you purchase it or if you have to purchase it separately. There's a huge variety of colors. First off, you have the clear lens, you have the green iridescent, you have the gold iridescent, red iridescent, blue iridescent, blackout iridescent, and the orange low light. So here's the orange low light. You can see kind of through it, and um, I would recommend that you use this every time you ride at nighttime. It actually brightens up the street so much. I used it a couple times now, and it is an amazing lens to have. I'm definitely gonna be carrying this around when I have the Berserker. Like I said, there are so many different options, so it's whatever whatever flavor of the day you feel like wearing. So sometimes I'll be wearing the blackout and then, you know, say nighttime comes around, I'll be putting this on, guaranteed. I'll be carrying this around everywhere I go if I have the Berserker. So I would suggest that you guys do the same as well. Oh man, that is such a cool color. I'll show you guys, hold on. When I look at it, I get snowboard helmet vibes. And uh, especially with colors like this, this is the kind of stuff you see on the mountains, right? Really, really cool. Let's see if I can just go. Oh, it works! I guess you can do that if you wanna swap out your visor faster. Nice. So yeah, that was my quick overview on the new Ruroc Berserker. I'm gonna be going out now, riding with a few friends, and I'm gonna take this helmet out there and we're gonna get a couple shots of it as well. So. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and just enjoy the little montage and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.